so thank you Adela and a big official welcome uh, from my side to all of uh, all of you present at the third of our teaching the future in Romanian Predau Vitor online course STEAM at the Gymnasium International Summer Meetings. As most of you already know, I am Anasta Matescu and I am part of the Asociația TechSub team for five years now and I work with and for amazing and inspiring teachers like you. What we would like to happen in this meeting, a short agenda. I will start by introducing to you a little bit about what we do at Asociația TechSoup, mostly for those of you who couldn't be present live in our first two meetings, so thank you for the patience of those who already know about us. And after, I will quickly give the floor and as much time as I can to our today's awesome guest Code Week leading teachers from Spain. And by the end of this session, we hope you will be inspired by them enjoy our time together and, of course, leave this meeting with at least one idea of an activity to do in the classroom with your students. Asociația TechSoup in a nutshell. We are a non-profit organization and we work to make technology accessible, understandable and familiar to change makers in our society. Thus, our work is divided in two main directions with and for civil society and STEAM education. In our two main research-based educational programs with and for educators and their students, Predau Vitor and Indreptar Digital, we try to equip them with pedagogy, digital skills and applied computer science competences. We are proud to say that we have reached a community of over 20,000 teachers that use digital tools and skills to build a better educational experience in the classroom. In trying to support as best and diverse as we can this amazing community, we also have built and offer teaching materials, a podcast, and regular community meetings. All these programs and resources wouldn't be possible, of course, without this small team of seven people the Asociația TechSoup core team members. Of course, there are many other friends and supporters which just wouldn't fit in only one picture. Coming back to why we are here. As I started, this is the third of our four meetings we have planned for our summer Teaching the Future online course. This course is possible and I will take again a minute to give thanks for the support of the Romanian American Foundation, Societe General Global Solution Center, Europe Code Week, Coder Dojo, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And now, dear Sonia and Francisco, thank you for taking the time to share your experiences. And I will let you introduce yourselves in which order you would like. You have the floor officially. You can um, start your cameras and you can share your presentation. Hello, okay. Anna. Good afternoon, Anna. Thank you very much for the opportunity to, to share our experience. Francisco, please, you first. <laughs> well, for me, it's, it's not a problem, but hello, Anna. Hello, Ro Romania from Spain. It's a hard, a hard day, a, a warm day. And well, if, if you want, uh, well, my name is Francisco Javier Macero. I'm leading teacher from our area is Extremadura, is in south uh, west of Spain, uh, near from Portugal. And we, we are uh, delighted to, to meet and share our project. It's called uh, Robospor, and it's a practice where we, we did uh, two years ago, but it's better that Sonia explain the, the rest. <laughs> Okay, no, it's the same. I am, my name is Sonia Barras Nogales. So yeah, I'm glad to, to have the opportunity of being here. And now we want to talk about some robotics uh, and sport. Let me share the screen. Um, wait. Okay. The audio.
we can see your presentation, Sonia. Thank you. Well, I start. Uh, Sonia, can you pass the? Yes. Well, uh, every, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, project called uh, RoboSport, Robotics and Sport. Uh, we are Francisco Javier Macero and she is uh, Sonia Barras. We are uh, living teachers in Spain. And in the following 45 minutes, we will show you uh, our project and how to apply in the school. Uh, first of all, uh, we are going to describe our region and the work we develop as leading teachers. We are located in uh, Extremadura, in the west of Spain, bordering Portugal. And we have uh, two provinces, uh, Cáceres and Badajoz, uh, the largest in Spain, although the least populated, with around 1 million inhabitants. But it's a very, very beautiful place to live land of conquerors of America, such as uh, Pizarro, Orellana, or Hernán Cortés, and of good gastronomy. We have the best ham in Spain. Um, two days ago, um, uh, I was the only cold wheel leading teacher in Extremadura, but last year, um, two people were nominated, and Sonia was one of, of us. And now uh, we can geographically uh, cover our entire region and we have formed a good team to develop this project. Uh, Sonia, uh, can you present the team, please? Sonia, the, the sound is muted. No, we can hear the sound. We can't hear also you, Sonia. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> think. Can you share the presentation yes. now? We still can't hear you, Sonia, but I think we'll wait a little bit just for you to. <laughs> yeah. It's a little problem, but. Okay, so the presentation, I'm not going to have any sound. Okay, this is the team now that you can hear me. This afternoon, we are here, Francisco and me, but we are a part of a um, fabulous and fantastic team, better teachers, some better uh, people. And they are Diego Guerrero, Consuelo Domínguez, Santiago Ortiz, Joaquín Pagador, eh, Pepe Grajera, Antonio Novara, Diego Miranda, Ramon Madrigal, Sonia, and Francisco. Okay, this is the, the whole RoboSport family rather than, than a team. Okay, they are fantastic. First of all, okay, before um, getting into the, the gist of the, of the presentation, we would like to, to know a little bit about you, what kind of sport do you practice or, or do you like to practice? Practice Or better, <laughs> do you like to watch him? Because there are people who doesn't want to, to practice sport. So please, I think you know the, the website, menti.com, just you have to type this one and put this code. If you let me, I can share the link or just scan the. Yes, code. Sonia, if I can make a, a talk in Romanian, so colega mea Adela o să vă transmită pe chat linkul de Mentimeter sau puteți să știți deja puteți să intrați pe menti.com, dar a revenit acum colega mea Adela pe pe chat cu linkul, puteți okay, să spuneți, puteți să uh, introduceți uh, în engleză sau în română uh, ce sporturi uh, practicați, ce sporturi faceți. Deci, în orice limbă este în regulă. Mulțumim. Okay, we have the first answer, dance. It's a good one. All, all the remaining people dance. It's good. <laughs> we do like to dance. <laughs> want to repress? Okay, five people. Oh, there are a lot. Hiking, chess, running, dancing, drumity. I don't know what's drumity. It's hiking. It's hiking. Drumity. It's hiking. Oh, okay, perfect. Gymnastics, volleyball, tennis, swimming, and chess. Okay. Athletics. I, I see. Ping pong. I see some uh, teachers uh, are also a good one. <laughs> Trying to answer into Spanish. Perfect. <laughs> 
swimming we have also in chat so a lot of uh, sports gymnastics swimming again climbing yeah i'm going to refresh again basketball chess we have a lot of sports there are only six people uh, i think we are connected not... rather than 200 more or less so I think it's, it was more easier for our teachers to write in chat. So we see a lot of answers in chat and I think the, okay. that's okay. Also skating, box, dancing. I'm reading out loud what they're saying. Tennis. Okay. Tennis. There are lots. Sport. Yes. Dancing lots again, swimming, tennis. So we have a lot of sports. We, all the sports we, we can uh, yeah, yeah. have that conclusion. Okay. Okay, I'm going to see the chat. Yeah, there are many, many, many. Okay, tennis may be one of the most <laughs> common, no? And dance, maybe. Okay, just follow with the presentation, Ruby. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, um, now uh, we ask uh, you the following question. Uh, have you ever thought about teaching your favorite sport through the robotics? Uh, well, that's it, uh, robot sport. Sonia, can yes. Yeah, that's following one. Uh, now uh, we are going to describe what is robot sport. Uh, first of all, it's a project made from teachers to teachers. The team is composed of teachers from primary and secondary education. Some, as is my case, are working on teacher training others uh, carry out their work in the ICT service of our administration, and the vast majority are in schools and high schools teaching students in the classroom. Uh, its main uh, aim is to learn the rules of different sports modalities through robotics. Our idea is that learning to practice a sport is possible through robotics. The rules of the game are sometimes not easy to learn, but through this project, we will get to know them by playing. Another purpose is the integration of computational thinking in different subjects like physical education, history, physics. And with this project, we have set ourselves the goal that everyone through sport can learn to program and use robots without uh, having technical knowledge or belonging to science areas. In addition, the inter interdisciplinary nature of the project will allow uh, teachers from different areas to work together. And finally, we announced that this project is available in Spanish, in Spanish and English. At the end of the presentation, we will provide you the links so that you can access this educational resource. Perfect. At the end of the of the presentation, in the same slide that Francisco is saying that you have both links, the Spanish and English version, you, you will always have the, the link for this presentation. So don't worry about take a screen or, or whatever, because you're going to have the, the screen and the emails and all the things that are or the personal data that you want, that you can can use to contact. Okay, Francisco, continue. Okay, what can we do in RoboSport? We know that it's robotic and it combines robotics and sport, but how <laughs> we do it and what can we do when, when we use RoboSport? In RoboSport project, the students uh, will learn the rules of different sport modalities through robotics. They will learn the sport rules, techniques, and how to solve problems such as the movements. I think you are wondering on how a, a robot can play a uh, discus throw or archery. Okay, we are going to show one of the options. Maybe you can think other ones. First of all, learning objectives. We are teachers, and I think all of us. So we we have to to bear in mind. Uh, what we want to, to our pupils to, to get, to, to achieve. And one of them, the first of all, 
are to present the contents related to robotics and programming in an attractive way for students, integrating STEM concepts in a transversal way within the curriculum. Second one, to know the advantages and disadvantages of the use of robotics for learning the rules of sports. The third one, to elaborate a catalog with activities which favor the use of robotics in cross-curricular projects. And finally, the fourth one, to favor students' implication from significant learning, playing an active role in their own learning process. Okay, sorry for this theoretical uh, point. Francisco? Well, uh, it's time to show you the web of the project. Uh, in Extremadura, our area, we have a platform called Escolarium that uh, through the CREA project, uh, we can develop resources using a tool called Excel Learning. In the last year, it has improved and you can use it online. It has been a good idea because you can update all the information and modify easily all the content. If you have uh, if you access to RoboSport Web, you can see the, uh, three different modules to work. The first is dedicated to training. In this module, you can practice with different tools like Make Code or Scratch. It's recommended to all the people that begins with robotics and programming. Yep. The second Stop module- for a while. Stop it, yep. because if you want, we can show them in the presentation and in the, the, yeah, in the, resource, the resource, if you prefer. Yep. Okay, this is RoboSport Create Project. And here it is the training zone, the one that Francisco was mentioning. Okay, training zone, it's here. Now competition. Sorry, Francisco, continue. No, it's not a problem. The second uh, module is the competition, uh, we, where you can find uh, different sports to compete with or against your students. This is, uh, we have uh, four sports. And we, we want to develop another sports like uh, soccer, uh, basketball, um, fighting, uh, many sports, many sports. And the, the last um, module, uh, if you want to develop different activities to, uh, to live um, and to learn more deeply about the sport, the most recommended module is project. In this part, we show you how to develop a project about the next Olympic Games in the future classroom lab. It's a new concept. Well, not not, not new because it, it's the the anniversary, the tenth anniversary of a future classroom lab. But it's a new concept of classroom created to use technology, active methodologies, and collaborative work. Uh, okay. If you want to yeah. pass this. Yeah, 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 sorry, because I want to start the boat. <laughs> well, in what activity can we do in the training zone? Well, uh, in this project, we believe that two best resources to learn about programming and computational thinking are microbit and Scratch. They are easy applications to learn based on block programming and ideal to use in online learning. It's very important because your students can practice at home, improving their skills and their knowledge about programming. With, program, uh, with Microbit, we have created two interesting activities that help to organize the sport activities, preparing the melody with Microbit and making a scoreboard for the competition. And with the scratch, the last. Uh, okay. No, no, the. This one. The last, the last. No, no. The previous one. Yes, yes. Yes. Well, oh, sorry. With, with the scratch, uh, your students can see uh, and practice uh, with different games made in this platform that help them to understand how our robots work. And next, uh, Sonia. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. It's, in the first activity with uh, Microbit, we explain how to use it uh, to compose music related to the world of sports. 
in the web, uh, you can hear uh, some melodies like Gonna Fly La Now from the Rocky movie, the original soundtrack from Chariots of Fire, or the Olympic Games in in our opinion, a microbit is one of the best resources to be used in subjects like music. Besides, uh, the microbit uh, car is not necessary to compose because you can make the melody through the simulator. It's very, very easy to use. Okay, if you if want you, to, I can try to. If you to want to. It or? Can you access to the uh, microbit? I'm going to web? try. Yeah, yeah that is. But I need to share my screen, sharing the audio, so I can talk. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem. So, well, a microbit is a, a resource that we use uh, commonly because it's, it's very useful. And this is the part I... The Rocky movie. Can see the... Partitude and to compose is very, very with microwave. This sound is the sound of the, the, the microbit car, it's not the of the laptop. If you use this car, it's very easy to and um, and the car has a headphone and you can hear the, the sound. It's the best by using the, the microbit. <laughs> He's the boss of the microbit. Sorry, I'm sharing again the presentation. Yeah. Sorry. It's your turn. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, it's my turn. Okay. By the second activity, by using the, the microbit, the one we proposed was making a, an, a scoreboard for the competition. Okay. We we used to, used to show the result of the competition. We use it or it by, by designing in the using Tinkercad and a, a 3D printer created with the recycled materials and just to, to show the, the score. Okay by the teams or groups or, or the type of grouping that, that you use, okay? This is another activity by using the, the microbit. And by using Scratch, okay, we have, we propose 12 simulations of, of five sports in Scratch, athletics, golf, football, motor and combat sports. And the learning objective of this training with Scratch is to know the sport from a robotic point of view, okay? Okay, once again, I I have to switch off to stop sharing just to share the sound. <laughs> Sorry. We are okay. All is good. Well, it's, it's very interesting to use a, a video to show the students in the first session uh, the different activities that they, they want to, to do. Um, and next, uh, Sonia. Okay, let me just uh, to, to define a, a concept. When you see the word CREA, let me type it in the chat, CREA 
in Spanish is creación de recursos educativos abiertos. What in English means open educational resources. Okay? In English, open educational resources. So the one we are showing you this resource, you can take it from yours and um, just uh, personalize. Okay? Sorry, Francisco. Continue. No, it's, it's very interesting that uh, you... Um, yeah, but because um, I, I've seen in the video CREA <laughs> and it is OER. All, <laughs> all our resources are open. You can use it. Um, it's very use, uh, useful and you can use the, the translate. For example, in Google, uh, you, put, you put the translation mode and it's very easy to, to use. Uh, now uh, we are going to show you the competition module. Uh, in the first year of RoboSport project, we have developed uh, four sport, uh, sports to do with robots. Archery, golf, uh, discus throw, and 100, 110 meters hurdle. Athletics is a modality or a, a, a race in, in athletics. And uh, we want to, to create new activities with another sports like rest, wrestling, uh, for, uh, if one, Formula One, shot putt, uh, peso in Spanish, <laughs> or uh, football. Uh, we start with archery. Uh, it's a precision, a precision sport that consists of shooting arrows and targets uh, placed at long distance. Uh, you will need a bow and many arrows to practice these sports that is Olympic since uh, Paris 1900. Uh, you can play archery individual, adding all the points you get in each suit, or by teams, adding uh, the result of all the members. The point in each uh, shoot depends on the color of the target. The center is gold or yellow that adds up to 10 or nine points. The red zone, uh, eight or seven. Uh, the blue, six or five. Um, the black four or three and the white one uh, two or one point. Uh, in, in the next, yes. In all the sports, uh, we are going to explain the previous tasks uh, you will need to do to organize and perform all the uh, competition. In archery, for example, you will need to create with your students a dartboard. Uh, you could print it from a PDF format. Uh, or do it uh, in continuous paper roll. Uh, about the competition zone, uh, you will mark it with tape a corridor, uh, seven meters long and two meters wide. Um, and to do this activity, but uh, you can modify depending the age of the, your students and the space available, like uh, you can see in the, this photo. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. No. Oh, oh sorry, that like, doesn't work. But uh, don't worry because the videos are all of them here. So here you can here you can watch it. Okay. Let me say again. Okay. When talking about the the archery, okay, uh, Francisco has mentioned the, the rules of the sport. But how how can we adapt to robotics? So depending on the level of difficulty, we could choose. Use the, rob the robot as an arrow, don't throw in, <laughs> just hitting it, or the robot hits another object, maybe a ball. The, let me try to show it in the competition archery short description. This is the, the dart adaptation to robotics. Okay, here you have the, the same level one easy mode. Here you have the video, which doesn't work in the presentation, but you have both, okay? The easy mode and the challenging one. So don't worry because you have, you, you are going to have the, the whole resources, okay? And furthermore, we yes, also... uh, Sonia, uh, the, the first me. activity and the, the easiest activity is uh, archery. Yes. To to program robot, robots because it's very easy. You can only program to move 
one, two, or ten meters. Three seconds. And yeah. When it stops, uh, uh, you achieve the one, two, or seven points, no? Yeah, in the first one, you will have to measure the speed and the time that you want to, for the robot to, to walk, to, to go. And in the second one, you have to take into account uh, the ball of the object that you are hitting. So maybe it's a, a little bit complicated to calculate what you, what you need, okay? And uh, the organization material, the dartboard, mobile device, smartphone or tablet, just to prove the, the robot, floor robot in this case is the M-bot and a ball in the challenging mode. Okay, software and applications, apps, make block or M block and types of grouping, it depending on, on your classes and the, the peoples that you have. Okay, maybe individual, pairs, and the timing, it's orientative 30 minutes. Okay, related to the types of grouping, okay, that as we have mentioned at the beginning, this uh, program was developed last year. Okay, in the middle of the pandemic here in Spain, you can serve materials. Uh, we have uh, social distances, measures, and uh, the best common grouping type of grouping was individual. Okay, this year we we have other other types available. Mm, Francisco. Yes, not the the, the, the last the last. Uh... Oh, sorry. It's for uh, we commonly use uh, Mbot. It's a floor uh, a robot that is very easy to to use with with a phone or tablet because you pair in the robot and the, your your tool with the Bluetooth and it's very very useful to to program and to to uh, send the the. Um, the different rules or different actions that the the robot need to to do. Well, the we pass the second the second sport golf. Um, uh, the, this is an individual sport consists of introducing a ball into the holes di distributed on the course, doing uh, the least uh, number of shoots. It is an uh, Olympic sport since Paris uh, 19, uh, but it was many years uh, out of this event. In Rio 2016, it re returned to the Olympic program and, and golf is played on a natural grass field in the open air with many obstacles of water, sand, it's a, a bunker, uh, threes to avoid, and it's a precision sport because Accuracy is the key to success. Uh, you need to use golf sticks to hit the ball and uh, to uh, get it into the hole in the few uh, shots uh, possible. Uh, next, well, to elaborate a golf course for our robot competition, you can choose between two options. Uh, create each of the uh, 18 holes in continuous paper for example, or build a, a new a unique uh, math where place different elements like vegetations, bunkers, water obstacles. In the last option, it's very useful to create different uh, material or uh, 3D printing, like trees, stones, bridges, that you can put it in different, um, in each hole. No? And okay. To no no to elaborate a golf course for our robot competition. Um, oh no! Uh, finally, first sorry. You to prepare the competition. It is very useful to create a field card. This this is the like the screen, that like the image image. Um, to write the number of shoots uh, of our students in and the pair of the golf course design. The pair is the usual number of shoots necessary to complete each hole and all the course. Okay, as the, in the previous sport, okay, we were talking about the, the sport itself and then the adaptation to robotics. 
So how can we adapt golf to robotics? Don't worry for the videos, as I said before, because they work in the in the resource. Okay. So similar to our query, we have to choose. We could choose use the robot as the golf ball, or the robot hits the golf ball. Okay. Program the robot to move through the golf course, making the fewest uh, number of golf shots. And if the robot a robot stops in a bunker, lake, or forest, uh, plus one penalty. Okay, this is one option. And the second one. Okay, uh, the organizational aspects are material. What we what uh, we do we we need. Sorry, mud, the golf cart, obstacles and accessories, flags, trees, rocks, bunkers. As Francisco have said, uh, has said. Sorry, uh, you can use the three D printer and just to create them. Mobile device, smartphone, tablets, for robot embot. Okay, software the same as before. Types of grouping. Uh, the ones that you can use depending on the moment or, or the, the class that you have. And the time is also uh, 30 minutes, the one that we propose, okay? Obviously, first time, uh, the first time that you play, you are going to spend more than 30 minutes probably, okay? But the ones they have uh, taken the, the idea you know, or maybe the they know how to, to work, probably, uh, it lasts less than 30 minutes. Francisco, third sport, discuss. Yes, well, the last sport, golf, is the, the, the evolution of, of the archery uh, activities. In archery, you only move one time, and in golf, you need to move two, three, or four times. It's, uh, it's good when uh, students um, a program the robots with a uh, moving different different times because for, uh, in in archery only it's it's only one direction but in golf you can use it uh, different directions and to move uh, around and to avoid different obstacles is very interesting okay. and Here we, we pass have to, a consuelo <laughs> We we pass the third um, sport. Sport uh, is that discus throw. Uh, this is not a sport, uh, but an individual uh, individual sorry a modality within the sport of athletics. It's uh, considered uh, the oldest of the throwing events, and even of athletics, the games on, of ancient Greece. I'm sure you will know the Rodin discovers a sculpture that reproduces a discus thrower. And this modality consists of throwing as far as possible a heavy object, a discus, which can weigh between one and two kilos, depending on the category, because it can be dangerous. The throwing zone, zone is covered with a net to prevent someone uh, from being hurt. And in addition, the discus must land in a specific area, a sector between uh, 35, uh, 32, sorry, and 35 degrees of angle. Like the other sports, uh, we need to do previous tasks uh, to prepare better the competition. The first is to create the, the discus throwing area. Depending on the level of realism, that we want to give the throw, we want to create a throwing cage or not. If you want to do this productive measure, you can design it uh, using Thinkercad and uh, 3D printing or creating uh, using materials such good cardboard, plasticine. And the second thing we need to do is to prepare the robot. We need to adapt uh, a system that allow, allows it to keep the discus in motion and we, when it, it stops to throw the, the object. It, it is very easy to create a little piece with cardboard to maintain the discus. Yeah. In this case, it's a plastic lid when the robot uh, will be spinning. And finally, uh, we can do some things to organize better the competition like make a list with the throwing order 
indicating the distance achieved or if the throw has been null and use the scoreboard with microbit to show the distance achieved in each throw and the final classification. It's very, very easy and is very good for students to show all these uh, materials uh, print in 3D. Sonia, the next. Yeah, but you've been. <laughs> I thought that it, something was wrong with your present with your speech. Okay, yeah, the next one. As the previous one, I don't know how they work. The video doesn't work, but don't worry because you have the 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 videos in the in the resource. Now, how how can we adapt discus throw to robotics? So to carry out a discus throwing competition with robots, we will have to prepare a throwing area for our robot, choose an object that does the function of the discus, something to throw, basically, and equip our machine with a system that allows the object to go forward with the inertia produced by breaking the movement. It sounds pr probably more complicated than how it is. It really, let me go to the video adaptation to robotics okay easy mode oh i don't know how it is no it's not the uh, the video oh it, they are not okay sorry but i thought i think that they were there and the other the second one it's the the materials that we need Okay, the only ones which are different because they are the same, we need a bottle cap and measuring tape. Okay, microfit it's it's option. Okay, the same types of grouping, individual, as Francisco has said, it is an individual sport, and the timing uh, 30 minutes. The last of the sports. Yes, um... Francisco? Yes, the last sport or modality included in athletics is the 100 or 110 meters hurdles, depending on the, the sex, no? uh, male or female. Hurdle racing doesn't uh, have its origins in the games on uh, ancient Greece. The historical antecedents of these races at, are in the University of Oxford, where in 1850 uh, they organized a race in which they have to overcome uh, then 10 hurdles. In this modality, the athlete must run in a straight line and pass 10 barriers or hurdles. He or she can fall a hurdle and will not be penalized, but logically uh, the athlete would lose speed in the race and go slower, which will take longer to reach the finish line. In this modality, technique is very important to pass each hurdle without jump and without losing speed. As previous task, uh, we need to prepare the mat to play with robots and the obstacles to pass uh, in the race. The first activity to do is the elaboration of the athletic track. We can print some uh, sheets with the line or paint on continuous paper always white so that the sensor works accurately. In this mode, uh, as we see after, we use the follow the line sensor. It's very, very interesting because if you don't uh, prepare the sensor in the best way, uh, the robot stops and you need to, to calculate the distance uh, between the lines and it's very, very, very useful and very interesting. And for the second mo uh, mode, we can do the obstacles, uh, the hurdles in cardboard, for example. We need to pass it on the mat so that the robot has to accelerate and go over the hurdle. It's a little difficult because you can uh, organize different hurdles. And if you don't pass with the uh, enough speed, the hurdle, uh, not uh, not uh, the robot, not pass the hurdle. It's very, very. 
in very easy to to organize and it's more difficult difficult to program with the students okay the same as before once that we have seen the the sport rules how to adapt it uh, into robotics so if we want to do an activity that simulates the 100 110 meter hurdles we will need to closely reproduce the conditions of this competition we will need a corridor or a white space about 10 11 meters where we can move the robot freely in this time we will use the line follower sensor which makes the the robot to follow the line the ones that we um, have uh, created by using the the tape or just by painting it and where we can move the uh, sorry yeah where we can move the robot freely in this time we will use the line follower sensor which will activate or deactivate so that the robot can can continue its journey and we can also use the motion sensor so that when it detects an obstacle it accelerates its speed and passes it correctly okay the materials okay the ones which are different the continuous paper white obviously and the marker or a black adhesive type just to to make a, a contrast which helps the the robot to to find the line which it has to to follow okay the same as the the rest as the same as before robot spot in the future classroom yeah. lab uh, sorry for the videos we we, we can check the, the the presentation and pass yeah, all, all the videos because it's very very interesting to to see uh, the different uh, um, activities and if you can see uh, it's a pro, uh, the four sports are in progress the difficult is is in the last uh, the last sport but if you want to to do all the, the all these sports all the four sports is very very interesting to see uh, the students have pro, uh, progressing in program no? And well, the, the last part is Rospor in the Future Classroom Lab. Um, it, the Future Classroom Lab is an initiative of European Union, which uh, through the European School Nets uh, aims to transfer educational spaces favoring the integration of technology, collaborative learning, and the use of active, active methodologies. This space is made up uh, of six learning zones that you can see uh, that allows different activities to be carried out which will help to develop different types of learning based on this proposal the robot sport project can be developed with activities in the different spaces which uh, will help to us to investigate the chosen sport design the game exchange opinions to elaborate the competition rules and to carry out a tournament interacting with technology through robotics and programming. But uh, what is the objective that we propose with this project? Uh, first of all, uh, we think it's very important that teachers update us uh, and we can respond to the demands of today's society. To achieve this, uh, we must make use of active methodologies such as uh, project-based learning, which will allow to us uh, to work collaboratively and in phases which, uh, with all our students. And we also need to achieve that the students acquire the key competencies. And in RoboSport, you can work all the competencies. For example, competence in linguistic communication is work because students are using programming languages and describing the rules in the different sports. If another competence in math mathematics, uh, science and te technology uh, is work using concepts uh, related to math, technology, physics, or when students use uh, robotics and programming concepts, the digital competence is obviously working using collaborative tools to develop activities in groups or when students use ICT 
for the elaboration of personal digital documents or expressing the rules of the sport. About okay. uh, learning to learn, uh, they also work the comprehension on programming routines and the procedures to get the best solution uh, for each problem. And for example, another one uh, about the social and civic uh, competencies, the collaboration in the group is very important, taking on the responsibilities for achieving our objectives or showing respect to the rest of the students inside the team or assuming different roles depending on the sport even proposed. Yeah. Okay, if you, can see you, it. Want, if yes. you don't mind, there are five minutes left, please. Ah, sorry. Okay, I just write in you. Don't, Sonia, yes, Francisco, yes, please sorry, don't, sorry. Don't, don't worry so much about the time. We, okay, we can go perfect. a little okay. over. It's Oh, it's okay. Okay, thank okay, you. okay. Okay, perfect. Anna, yes, thank you. Uh, Okay, the, the key competencies which Francisco was mentioned are the ones that propose the European Union. Here in Spain, we have uh, adapted to our local uh, laws and, and regulations, and I think that is the same for the rest of the European countries, but they are the, the ones that the European Union propose. Francisco, do you want to talk uh, anything else or...? No, well, well, I'm currently um, organizing different future classroom labs. This uh, is the CPR from Safra, it's a, a teaching uh, organization um, and teaching training, sorry. Uh, and we have uh, for, uh, 41 uh, future classroom labs in different schools and high schools. It's a very interesting project and we like to, to show you. Yeah, 41, 40, 41 future classroom labs in Extremadura. In Extremadura. Yeah. Okay, my turn. Okay, how can we relate broad sport into the future classroom lab? Okay, just to, to mention some of one of the idea for its zone, investigate, search for the information about the rules of the sport. This is an, the easiest activity, I think. In the develop zone, development of the math and competition rules. What can we do in the create zone? Creation of the competition math and tinkering the robots, okay? In the percent zone, presentation of the competition rules to, to the rest of the class. Interact, develop, uh, development of the competition, robot programming itself, and exchange or explore final classification, exchange of experiences on robot programming, and the conclusions. Just to share, okay? There, a proposal. Okay. Our robotic well, league here in yes. Extremadura. We, we have the Robot Reto. It's a, a interesting competition, but it's not a competition. It's a um, an activity that we can... Um, uh, used to learn robots uh, uh, or related to, to program uh, with different activities. Uh, we yeah, have three mod modalities, take a reto, robo reto, and invent reto. Uh, Sorry, uh, Francisco. Yes? Sorry, robo reto in Spanish is a, yeah, it's a, it's a trick which is made from the words robot and reto, which in English could be robot challenging or challenge. robot challenge. Okay, it's the... This is the, Sorry. the, the second the yeah. the second year uh, because the COVID stops this activity. Not, not at all because we, we did many activities online, but the most interesting thing is to... to have the, the activities with the students no? the, from different schools or high schools. This one? Okay. Well, uh, yes, uh, we have there are many some examples. samples. Yeah. Hope it works. You are not going to hear it, but. This is the, the, the other um, activity. We can couldn't uh, see with uh, the video. Is uh, the discourse throw is very easy to to do, and students learn to to move the in a different way the, the robots. 
Okay, yeah, this goes through. This is one of them. And other sample. This is the team loss demos. <laughs> Is the 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 activity to to move the the ball with the robot, and it's well, it's using the the tablet with a, a acne a, a, with a, como de podemos decir acne Sonia <laughs> in English. Uh, it's uh, students with uh, difficulties to to learn, and it's very very easy to and very interesting to do how they program in the last uh, in the easiest way, no? Sonia, we pass the last <laughs> because we have no time. Okay, I was enjoying because if as you have noticed, there are uh, spe special need student. So, as you just one one more question again, please. Your presentation is so fascinating, and we see the feedback from our teachers. We will stay over time, so please do not rush. We are okay. Thank you for being considerate. Yeah. The, okay. The, yeah. The, yeah the, the brief summary. Yeah. You. Nah, me? No, you. You. Me? Okay. <laughs> Now, the RoboSport is a project which allows us to work on the computational thinking inside the classroom, for example, organizing training activities, teachers, students, knowing more about sports and robotics. Both, uh, both topics are, are oh, be improved and including robotics into non-STEAM subjects, such as social sciences, English, history, physical education, the cross-curricular aspect that Francisco mentioned before. As we said, here you have the presentation, the link from RoboSport in Spanish and in English. And here are our personal data to, if you have any any doubt or, or if you want to, to ask anything else. Well, uh, the, no, the, the resources are not in Romanian, but it's very easy to, because you can use Google, for example, to translate and all, all the only thing that you can uh, translate is uh, the, the the rules but it's in english and it's, if you want to to use and to translate in romania uh, you can do it and yep. thank you anna thank you the rest of the romanian mm -hmm. people and thank you very much for your attention sorry and, for the <laughs> and now we have questions for you <laughs> So okay. uh, first of all, uh, amazing presentation. We got a lot of feedback in Romanian, English, even Spanish. So teachers uh, congratulated you and uh, found the idea, all the ideas very interesting. Uh, some questions we got, uh, the first one, what, uh, and you could just answer not going back to the presentation or uh, you choose. Okay. Uh, what robot kit did you use for archery? I think, was it Mbot? The Mbot, the, yeah in the, the whole sport uses the same Mbot mm -hmm. be because it is one of the most common in the extramarine schools. <laughs> Great. I, I also saw some feedback from our teachers that Mbot is also used in Romania. So uh, hopefully this will Perfect. inspire them to also use in archery. Um, one more question. Uh, uh, what uh, uh, printers, uh, 3D printer software did you use for golf when you printed? Tinkercad. By designing it, think cut. I've typed it. Okay, perfect. So uh, they also can look again at the resources. Yeah. Uh, but... Another um, question: How old are the students uh, you uh, with whom you did this project? What are their uh, ages? Well, we 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 our team is from primary to secondary education teachers, but we are used it uh, with. Uh, teachers from six, uh, seven to 18, and with teachers, because these uh, activities are very enjoying and very playful, and it's very easy to, to implement. 
because with, for example, Arcray with only a robot, you can do it this activity because uh, children can uh, draw the, the target and uh, in golf, you can use uh, different uh, materials to, to put the goods, the, the rocks, the bunkers, and um, it's very easy. And for example, in secondary ed ed education, uh, students can do the, the classification, the scores, the rules, and to present uh, is very, very easy. easy. Uh, it's not only robotics, it's a way to uh, achieve all your objectives to to show to to le learn to learn to collaborate uh, collaborate with uh, your teammate is 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 the most important thing not only robotics thank you um one some more now uh, questions are starting to pop up with, uh, in this uh, okay i've sent um, in the chat the links Perfect. Okay. We will give all the links and resources. Thank you for also for doing that. Now, um, how many? So you you do a robot sport competition. Let's say we choose golf. How many hours or classes do you need to go through an entire competition or a, a sport competition? A, a sport. Sonia, your. No, I think it depends on the level of of the pupils. I mean. If it is the first time that they are, they are going to work with robots, probably you will have to spend more than one session and depend on the ages of, of the pupils. So, but I think that the the one of the best <laughs> things that Robospore uh, offers is that you can adapt it to every level, every pupil, every I think every school because you can use the robot, but you can also use RoboSport without a robot, just using a scratch. You can use our microbit and you may have the microbit itself in uh, physically, but you can also use the microbit online uh, editor and you don't have neither the microbit itself. So I don't know, <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> we are a RoboSport lovers. No, yes, in, and in every time uh, you can do it uh, in with one, two or three subjects. For example, if you um, are teaching history, you can uh, teaching uh, the history of Olympic Games and the way to, to the sports are important in this age and students can present uh, in, in language, for example, using the, the the language and in physical education you can do it the the robot stop for competition and the competition with a physical competition <laughs> and it's very very easy it, uh, you can do it as the the time is the the problem many times if you want to do an activity with 10 uh, sessions is very very interesting in different subjects, but it, you want only one hour, but uh, we have the, this practice with uh, students and we have the four um, uh, sports in two hours uh, and a half, more or less. It's very, very easy and it's very adaptive, the, the, this project. Thank you also for mentioning, Francisco, that these projects can be made interdisciplinary, meaning uh, teachers from uh, multiple subjects can collaborate and you can do, as you said, robotics at a history class uh, uh, subject. So it's very nice to uh, combine a lot of more subjects than just computer science and IT and C. So thank you for yes, mentioning that. For yes, Anna, because I don't know if in Romania you have a, a subject with, in, with robotics, but in Spain is there is not a subject, and we and we need to use the robotics in different subjects, and it is very interesting because it's an interdisciplinary activity, and it's the way to to achieve the the, the other old um, objectives or something like that. Mm -hmm. Building on what you just said, we had another question. Uh, someone, a teacher asked, uh, when do you do these exercises, these projects, like in the normal uh, school you know, schedule or uh, extracurriculum? So 
so you answer the question basically you you do it in during school hours as you said right yes or both uh, sonia sorry uh, so okay. so basically Yes, basically the question, uh, and I was building on what Francisco said, um, when do you do all these projects uh, with the children? During school hours or you have some extra curriculum uh, yeah, yeah. activities? Like we after don't have extra curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sport and it's very funny and you can do it in extra time. But the most, yeah, I think it's very interesting to use in in um, hours of from math, uh, science, because with the key competencies, uh, you can uh, use it as a, an interdisciplinary project. And it's very interesting. They use it both, I, I say. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You can do it, uh, the organization in uh, the subjects and the, in the extracurricular team, there are many students from different uh, classes you can do it at the competition it's very very easy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you one last question and maybe uh, if we don't uh, catch all the questions uh, they can get in touch with you and or with us uh, one more question so if teachers cannot uh, let's say they cannot access physical robots uh, i saw that you have a lot of platforms that you can just use and integrate in the, the project so you don't really need a physical robot robo, robot to, go, to buy right you can use online platforms yeah it doesn't necessary it's better because it's more attractive but if you want to use a robot probably you will need a previous work uh, familiarizing the pupils with the uh, computational thinking and the uh, movements or other things so it's not a uh, compulsory or not for the first moment. It's very attractive for sure, but it, it doesn't uh, add a, a clue. So I was looking for the Diego Guerrero profile in Scratch because they have all the sport modalities uh, made by Scratch, but I'm, I can't. So uh, as you have the presentation, uh, Diego Guerrero, Dilu97 on, on Twitter, okay? Mm -hmm. They can have add these resources. Whatever that you can imagine, Diego has done it before. Yes, yes. In Scratch. So it's just whatever. Yes. <laughs> they have oh. no limits. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, it's in, perfect. Well, it's, um, it's very interesting, this, this uh, uh, question, because um, robotics has the physical, uh, physical part that is very interesting because the, when the students move the robot, move uh, uh, physically, physically, no. But if if you want, uh, you haven't uh, robots, you can do it uh, scratch or or microbit. Microbit is very easy, and the simulator is very uh, powerful. Is very interesting, uh, and you don't you haven't the uh, if you haven't the uh, the microbit car, you can use it the simulator. But it's not uh, expensive. It's uh, thirty euros, uh, more or less. And the Mbot, well, well, it's more expensive, but it has a uh, one hundred euros, more or less. And not for all the students, but you can do, uh, or you can have in your school five, uh, six robots, and you can do many many activities with, with these uh, robots regarding costs uh, we have uh, several teachers asking this uh, how do you find the funds to uh, acquire the robots so it's uh, the school buys them or how if you can yeah, well them. well sonia can you tell me sorry i was uh, typing the diego's link ah, sorry yeah. <laughs> No, no. Uh, no. Well, uh, in our area in Extremadura, there are many, many projects. Mm -hmm. And when, if you uh, are participating in these projects, the administration uh, provides uh, funds uh, to to buy these uh, these projects. Not many, but at least four or five robots or. 10 microbits is very easy to, to, to achieve. 
but um, uh, we are um, a team that have uh, uh, not many robots, but we can organize and to to share the robots with another uh, school. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, I think we, we will end this uh, webinar in, in this uh, note just uh, to show the power of a community, of a, a community of teachers, so sharing resources, ideas, and on this note I would uh, like to uh, thank you again uh, so much for your time, uh, you and the teachers that contributed a lot in the chat and uh, we found out a lot of uh, 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 from them uh, how many activities they also do and they were inspired by you so the feedback is great thank you uh, and not, uh, just a short note for the teachers that are uh, uh, attending you will find all the resources and registration of the, this webinar in the online course so don't more worry if you miss something and Sonia and Francisco will also share other um, uh, resources if they have uh, some more and we, we you will have them so don't worry so thank you again uh, I think this is an, the official goodbye if you would like to say any uh, few ending notes okay yes thank you thank you to you all for your attendance for your attention hope you like find useful inspiring for sure whatever you need please contact thank you anna and the code quit initiative for this opportunity for the chance thank you francisco always <laughs> this is my 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 mentor and no that's all no, no. sonia is a, but the, one of the best uh, teachers from uh, sharing and organizing teams and it's very very useful his uh, uh, her help and we are um, leading in teachers and code week is a, a way to to collaborate to to share uh, resources we share all our products our our activities because it's very very interesting i have uh, uh, many activities in in code week in the web web page that you can use, and it's the best uh, way to 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 organize the education no? uh, using different activities and collaborating. And if you want to to know about more about our projects, you can put it in in Twitter, for example, and it's very uh, interesting to to share all all activities. Thank you. Thank you very much. And hopefully now we will have a lot, a lot more Code Week activities on the map from Romanian teachers. Thank you and uh, goodbye. Like Bye. Thank Bye. you to you all. Nice summer.